Okay. We got a 75 liter plastic container here that we well, essentially tried to grow potatoes and we can see we've had some success with that little guy over there but we don't actually know what it holds so we're gonna tip it out and see how many potatoes we got out of this particular pot and there were these three potatoes planted here as well i think only three um these were kitchen potatoes just regular store-bought pick and pay in our case potatoes and they chittered in the cupboard so we stuck them in this um, planter. We did plant two other varieties um, in the same size container with the exact same soil mix. And we're going to see which of the three varieties was the most successful for us over time. Today we're only going to harvest the one because we've run out of potatoes and we can't wait any longer. We're going to give it a shot. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, do it quick. That way we can't see. One, two, three, go. Tip it. Okay. <laughs> this makes it more fun. So that's the original potato it was grown from. Sorry, the lighting's a bit poor. But yeah, it's extremely, well, there you go, it's full of earthworms. That's actually looking really good. Yeah, I'm gonna collect them. So this is all the potatoes that we ended up with. We did get some unique looking potatoes. But I don't think that's gonna change their flavour. So we started off with I think Duncan said three potatoes and we ended up with a few. I haven't counted them. <laughs> um but this is what we ended up with. It may not seem like a lot of potatoes, but for the two of us, this is at least a good, I'd say, five meals worth of potatoes, generous portions. But this all came from three potatoes that we had already paid for. Yeah. Um, so, in the end, it's all a win to us, and I think we might go inside and weigh them, just to figure out in kgs how much we ended up with. Okay, so we're inside now and I'm just about to weigh the potatoes. This guesstimation is two kgs of potatoes minus two and a half. So let's see who comes closest. Okay, love, so you're the winner. 1.4. That's not so bad. I mean, we've got a kg of potatoes off of three potatoes. Yeah. So this is the second uh, segment, if you would, of our potato harvest video. Um, these are two uh, seed potato varieties. The first video was shop-bought potatoes that were uh, chitting and we planted them out and got a 1.4 kilogram harvest if i'm not mistaken so this is about a month after 28 days to a month later we're going to harvest our second bucket of potatoes um, we've left them as is um, once the plant died back or the actual foliage we cut that down and have stored these just as is in the pot
over so we're going to harvest the up to date um, type seed potato we planted like I mentioned this is a month after the first harvest we've left them stored in the bins um, just haven't watered and haven't let it rain on them since well up until two night a month later so let's harvest and see what we've got instead <coughs> All the way? All the way. Okay. <sighs> one can, <laughs> one can only hope. One can only hope. Okay. Okay, I know we're getting one. At least. We have to eat tonight. <laughs> so what I've picked up is with our two previous plantings. Um, the depth at which you plant your seed potato makes a major difference. We've been planting about midway in a, I would say, 75 litre pot. So about midway. And as the potato grows, the, the, the green sprouts grow, you hill it with compost or straw, or whatever you have available. And you keep hilling it, you hill it about three times. Um, in the lifespan of the green foliage and what I've realized is at the level at which you plant nothing grows underneath that it only grows where the green leafy foliage grows the, the potato the spuds so I'm going to or we're going to at least try and plant a little bit deeper and I'm going to change up the soil recipe as well um, see what we get next round. And then the best I suppose out of the lot. So while I'm tidying, I might as well show you this quickly. So my mom gave me some peppers that my auntie sent. So thank you for those. And we also got a few more ranunculus corms that we're just going to randomly stick in the ground and see what comes up. So let's have a look at how much we got out of this harvest and it's not a heck of a lot but um, it's better than nothing I guess. Okay. One kilo, one kilogram. Okay. Yeah. It's well, not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Look, for two people, we can eat off of that. It's four meals worth. That's it. We've still got one tub to harvest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not too bad. At least we've got dinner and then some. Oh, win is Alrighty. a win. Win is a win. We'll take it. <laughs> Hello, kitten. Hey. Want to be famous? He is famous. <laughs> Get the soil back in the tub, I'll dry it out, solarize it, um, to kill any pathogens or whatever nematodes. Hopefully that kills off anything bad in there and I'm going to use the previous harvest soil. Oh, let me pot this up quickly.
So we've taken the soil from a previous potato harvest and we're going to start amending it. So I want to mix in a lot more compost in this round. So what I, what I generally try to do is buy compost in bulk, be it bagged or, you know, by the trailer load. But um, I'll buy it bulk and store it, preferably out of the rain and the elements, um, but let it compost on its own. It may not be a hot compost per se, but it does still degrade. Um, a lot of the times, once I've done that, um, I'll break a bag open and find mycelium colonized in clumps throughout the bag of compost, which is fantastic. I just kind of want to clarify, we don't um, make our own compost here. We do have a worm bin that we um, use for worm tea and to supplement nutrients into the actual garden itself. But because we are limited for space, we do tend to have to purchase the compost that we use. I reckon that's mixed well enough. Um, I would have liked it even, well, let's say more compost rich. Um, but this will do as the base layer. These are the taters we've got currently. They have been standing for quite some time Oops. and they are looking pretty ready for planting so let's get them in I'm only going to put three full taters um, you can chop them up um, take an eye off with each segment if you can dry out before you plant the segments otherwise they'll rot in the pot um, three whole potatoes and one small section um, that's been lying around as well. Let's see. So the soil in this pot is the soil we just amended. Uh, put a lot more compost in it than there was in the initial grow. Um, I said I wanted to plant the actual seed potatoes a lot lower down in the pot. So this is probably about three to four inches worth of soil. And I'm going to stick the spuds in and we'll cover up with I want to try pure compost this time. I was telling you earlier about the clumps of mycelium I have growing in these. And that's a perfect example of, and that is phenomenal for the soil. We buy compost like other people buy wine, so that it can mature. Yes. Right, so that's our late season potatoes. Tomorrow's the 1st of May, and we're going into winter, like I said, in what, a month or two's time. So let's see, let's see what we get from that. Hopefully we get some nice new potatoes. So this is the section of potato I found in the pot when we harvested previously. We just forgot it in there, um, and it has actually scabbed over quite nicely. It dries out, it creates a barrier, um, as the normal skin would. That over there is an eye, and that's over there as well. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to put this part now back in the driveway and we're going to see how it does. We're hoping that it gets at least a good six to eight hours of sunlight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey guys, thanks for joining us today. I hope you learned something about growing potatoes or planting them at least. Um, we're still learning. Never, never stop learning. Um, you can never know too much. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the day with us and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.